Hey friends! Hey friends, welcome back. We are going to do a little bit of a hop, skip, and the jump. So just as a reminder, here's our pelvic floor. Uh, we started at the feet, we worked our way up. Next episode, we're really gonna get into the, the meat, so to speak, the nitty gritty. Uh, but today we're gonna kind of bypass it because I always like working distal to proximal. So this is our next layer of distal. We're gonna work our way in through the jaw and particularly the diaphragm. Once again, this is Joseph Schwartz. This is Tom Myers. Uh, they're both basically looking at the internal support structures, read the core muscles. And these are basic representations of the core. And in both cases, you can see how the diaphragm is very much connected in. The body is basically a series of diaphragms. So diaphragms meaning like little suspension bridges. We have the archway of the foot as a suspension bridge. We have the pelvic floor as a suspension bridge. We have what we always kind of think of as the breath diaphragm as the diaphragm. The throat is also a diaphragm and even the brain actually sits in a diaphragm. And tension in any one of these segments can reverberate into tension in other areas, which is why when clients first come in complaining about hip pains, lower back pains, I always say relax your holes. And part of that is not just relaxing the holes down there, but this because this is a closed chain. So. I eat, it goes through my digestive tract, and I eliminate. So we really can't look at things related to the pelvic floor without looking at jaw and head, as well as the breath, and that's what we're gonna get into today. As with the other videos in this series, we'll start with a bit of massage. We can't really stretch things like the head or the jaw necessarily, uh, but we're gonna focus on releases for um, head and jaw and neck, and then into the diaphragm. So let's get into a head massage. Yummy. Laying down. I'm gonna first start just by kind of massaging my scalp muscles. So I'll actually turn away from you to start that. I'm kind of trying to pry the meat of the side of my head off of my head. And I go to the other side. And anytime I'm doing kind of a self head or face massage, I always just do a little pump of the lymph system here too. So just above the clavicle, I do about five or six times. And then I always do around the eyes too. You can take that into, this is more of a lymph massage going into the temple and pulling down. And then I would say you can kind of take that with rainbow. I could take this down all the way too if I wanted to. I'm just going to focus on I'm painting a rainbow on my forehead. And then I just call it pinching the eyebrows. The eyebrows, you can also do a slow pinch and then just sort of as the tissue starts to relax and give way, you can let that be the indicator of when you fully release the pinch. And then I also like just doing some trigger point release on the back of the head. I just sort of hold. And then gradually let my fingers pull apart like it's trying to pull the sides of my skull apart. <clears throat> and then pulling on the ears will also kind of release all around this part of the head. So the same idea there, you can just sort of do a slow pull. And I'm not yanking or going hard on any of this. This would be, you know, a similar pressure of what you would use on a child. So be gentle with yourself. And 
and then I'm also going to pull down on my jaw. This one I do give more force on. I mean, the masseter, the chewing muscle, it's pretty dense on those people. And then I usually pull that down, the chinny chin chin. Okay, then work the anterior scaling. So to get in there, it can be a little tricky, but you've got this meaty guy on the side of the neck. You kind of want to try to get over and under it. So there should be like kind of like a softer divot. And then if you tip your chin down, so give yourself a double chin like you're trying to look towards your belly button and glide up, keeping the back of your head heavy and elongating the back of the neck. So once again, and that you aren't gonna screw anything up here. So just go gentle. I don't think anybody would wanna jab themselves in the front of the neck. You can also go the opposite direction there where you start higher and pull down as you do the same motion. It will likely feel a bit tender if you find the right spot. Okay, and then last bit that we'll do here is trying to get underneath the pec muscles. So I'm gripping and I'm basically gonna try to pull my chest muscles off of my ribs a little bit, so I'm prying. And I can add that in with an arm rotation and even kind of a straightening. So right now I'm just pinning, I'm like grabbing and holding. And this is another one that I go with a little more force usually. And then other side. So it could be interesting. I always like doing tests of pre-test, post-test. It could be interesting to do something like a squat or a bridge. And then if you did all of this neck and shoulder release, does something that would target more of a pelvic floor type strength, like a squat, does it feel different? Like, are you able to get lower? Just a thought. Okay. All right, easier to breathe. Those are the some of the assistant respiratory muscles. And then now let's go in for the diaphragm. Just before we get into releasing the diaphragm, I just wanted to bring up this little guy. I call it the red tits. It is a um, trigger point releaser for the back of the head. It's called a still point inducer. I'll put a link there. It's 20 to 25 on Amazon, and it can be a really great way to release some of the tension at the back of the skull. Another great thing is something called the cranio cradle. I'll also put a link to that. It's really great for relieving some of the tension, a little bit of like some of the things that we were just doing. Okay, diaphragm. You could totally do this with a towel, but for the $10 investment for this, because you can do core work with this, it's great for also just sort of laying over and getting a nice breath opener, which we are not going to do. But once again, small investment, a lot of things that you can do with it. So I'm going, you can also note about this, you can self-inflate these. So if some of this ever got too intense, you could lessen the intensity by having a more mushy ball. That said, this one's a little bit mushy, but another reason why I like using these small balls as a diaphragm release is that buoyancy and the ability to shift the density into the intensity that you would like. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put this, when we think of the diaphragm, like right at the split of the rib cage. And I'm just gonna let my head relax down. And I'm gonna think about breathing into my back body. And then as I exhale, letting my body dome over the ball. We're also going to do some brief breath holds here. So I'm going to inhale. And I'm going to hold for 10 counts. You could do this for a lot longer. And then I'm going to exhale and hold for 10 counts. We're gonna do the same idea with the ball under my side now. I'm just gonna exhale and let my body drape over it. Hold for 10. Okay. 
And as I inhale, I can also inhale and fill into that space and hold for 10. And you could repeat any of these more than once. Just hit pause on the video. So here, breathing. I'm gonna inhale, hold for 10. You could also kind of massage as you do this on this, or even on the sides of the ribs, like kind of hitting into the grooves. And I would even encourage you to do that all the way up to the chest, just giving yourself a self massage. As you go. And then on the exhalation, I could lift my head up here and hold and do my 10 uh, breath hold count and exhalation here. In this case, and this is where it is helpful to have maybe not as high of an inf inflation on the ball. I'm just gonna hold here. I don't feel so much residual neck tension where that's uncomfortable. Okay, and then I'm gonna end with my opposite side that I haven't done yet. Relaxing over on the exhalation, holding for 10. Inhaling and filling into, like I'm trying to push my bottom ribs into that ball. I could also support my head here if I needed to with my fingers. So there's a slight other breath releaser that you can do that I made up that I've already recorded in a previous video and I will link to that right here. When it comes to diaphragm stretching, that's a little bit of what we were just doing with the breath holds. This is something that the chest and the pecs are, the, the pec minor is a major assist in respiration and it's tight from doing this all day long. So I always encourage people to just stretch especially once you're getting out of the bathroom. Like if you go use the bathroom, take a second, stretch your pec, stretch your arm on the side of a wall. So here I'm basically perpendicular and I'm doing that stretch. That's gonna hit more of pec major. Pec minor, which is really more of our focal point here, we're gonna go more of a diagonal. And I am just pivoting and reaching and I'm putting a little bit of gentle push into my hand. And you'd also want to take that into a 90 degree and reach the chest through. So I'm going to briefly do that on my other side. I go arms straight. Y. And L shape 90. And I'm pushing my bottom hip, my inner hip, as though I'm trying to push through that opening. Cool. We'll get into the last bit, and that is, how should you breathe? Using a slinky is my favorite way of describing how the breath should happen. So breath, we have a rib cage. It is a cage. Um, you want to feel that the breathing is going in a 360 degree fashion, which isn't for most people, once again, when we're kind of staring at this fixed point all of the time, mostly the mid back gets super, super tight, but that's the ideal that you're going for, which is why we did the release work over the ball. You wanna feel that on the inhalation, your collarbone lifts, your upper chest expands, and that as you continue to inhale, your pelvic floor will drop. So I would say it's kind of like an elevator, this gradual expanse down. And I also say that it's kind of like your organs literally are descending. Your diaphragm is, okay, let me exhale. It's flattening and it's pushing your organs down into the bowl of your pelvis. And then as you exhale, your pelvic floor will contract up and then the organs pull back up into the chest, into the rib cage. So just so if you can feel that. Pelvic floor has to relax on that inhalation and then exhale, it comes back up. This is why it's a suspension bridge. Your organs, everything isn't gonna fall out. You don't need to be all clenched down there. You are relaxing your holes on the inhale. 
And not that you're gonna clench your holes, but at least allow the elevator to draw back up. We'll do that one more time. Check in with your jaw. Can you release your jaw a little bit more? And then exhale, the elevator lifts. So try giving that a play. Just being more of aware of your breath. If you do any form of meditation, that motion alone, you can also kind of mimic it with your hand and just see if you can feel that rhythm with your breath. All right, see you next time.